A train derailment in Texas and members of Congress are concerned about a project derailment in Maryland. It's time for another episode of Bells and Whistles. Hello everyone, Bill Wilson, Editor-in-Chief of Railway Track and Structures Magazine with a look at the top news stories we were following the week ending October 30th. U.S. Secretary of Transportation Elaine Chao announced an investment of more than $291 million in grants for 11 intercity passenger rail projects in nine states through the Federal State Partnership for State of Good Repair program. The partnership program is intended to improve intercity passenger rail performance by funding capital projects to repair, replace, or rehabilitate publicly owned or controlled railroad assets, thereby bringing them into a state of good repair. The evaluation process considered several factors in choosing projects, including the project's abilities to improve service and safety and to meet existing or anticipated demand. The high-speed rail line that will run from Las Vegas to Southern California is coming to life these days. Brightline released a construction schedule for the service, which will be called Brightline West. After a bond sale is complete that will help pay for the initial phase, Construction is expected to begin in California and Nevada in 2020 and will be complete in 2024. Work all hinges on the bond sale. If the $3.2 billion action does not happen by December 1, California will put its allotted amount of the project back into the state's affordable housing fund. The total cost of the project is $8 billion. A Kansas City Southern train derailed near the Texas-Louisiana border on October 29th, causing schools to be evacuated and motorists to flee to safety as rail cars spilled in front of them. The accident happened in Mauriceville, Texas. The train was only 25 cars long, and only 15 cars were filled, including five tank cars. Four of the tank cars were carrying petroleum-based products, and the fifth was filled with a corrosive product. No injuries were reported. Maryland members of Congress are putting the full court press on Governor Larry Hogan regarding the Purple Line project, which appears to be at a near standstill after Purple Line Transit Partners gave notice it was leaving the job site. Senators and representatives signed a joint letter to Hogan. Maryland has taken control of a few of the Purple Line subcontractors, but has not announced how the project will be executed moving forward. The Maryland Transit Administration says it is still looking for ways to handle the project, The state could take it over completely, or another private investor or contractor could assume the responsibility. And now is the time to nominate your project for the 2021 RTNS Top Projects Competition. The deadline to submit your nomination is December 11th. To nominate your project, go to the URL you see on your screen. Well, that's a look at the top news stories we were following the week ending October 30th. For the latest news, go to www.rtands.com. You can also find us on social media. We are on Twitter and Facebook. Have a great weekend, everyone.